Hey everyone, it's Michael and Matt and Ruben from BillionNow.com.au Billionow, bringing you the best ever Friday ever. ever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where I was going with that. Well, it's Tell us, been a big week in the office. Pressure's oh. on for us to just constantly improve it now. I mean, that's obviously should be the aim anyway, but yeah, we've got big uh, shoes to fill now. This is the yeah. biggest one ever. To date. Next oh, week, we'll even see. bigger. Yeah. <laughs> well, so far, so good. It's been a huge week. It's been a, like, I have literally crawled in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I haven't eaten for ages. I'm fading away. No, no one's going to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been absolute chaos. And that's putting it politely. In the best possible way. I guess the funny thing is in this industry is that when things are quiet, it's all sitting around saying, oh, any any minute now, things are going (laughs) to kick off. Then when they do kick off, you think, oh, it'd be nice to have a bit of a breather and (laughs) have a little bit of downtime. But yeah, yeah, it's... It's, I've, it's I've learned, interesting. learned in this industry that you've got to be very careful what you wish for. Because yeah. when mm. it turns up, holy mackerel, does it ever. <laughs> so you say, oh, I wish I'd have a break. And there'll be no one. Like the whole of Melbourne will be a ghost town. And yeah. you, just, you won't see anything happening. Yep. It's like, oh, far out. Like, <laughs> so I hope we get a few customers. And then you're up to your eyeballs in it. You're trying yeah. to drag in people off the street to help you serve. And it's just <laughs> on for young and old. So, uh, yeah. It's been one of those weeks. Rubes, how have you been holding up? Oh, a little bit, uh, also a little bit crazy with the uh, uptick in price, but the um, we're, we're trying something new this week. Uh, I think it was Goat uh, noticed. Um, we are also now live on Facebook, I believe, if things, wow. if things are working correctly. I don't know if we've got anyone over there yet, but I uh, think things are, are working over there. We did try for Insta as well, but it looks like we, were, Insta, we uh, <laughs> <laughs> were sharing a uh, horizontal video on a vertical platform that didn't really <laughs> work very well. So we'll, we'll have to come up with a way for that. Um, but yeah, hopefully expanding the, the locations we are, we are streaming to, get some uh, different communities going. But um, uh, did, are we allowed to say YouTube's the home? I don't know. Or are we? Uh, do we? Are we allowed well, to have a favorite? The, if main, we're gonna, yeah. the main vessel <laughs> for now. Wait until Spotify blows up, though. That's it. We sign a deal like Joe Rogan. <laughs> That's the one. For exclusives. Yeah. Well, if they offer me that sort of money, I'll be over there like a shot. <laughs> like expect it. Yeah, a lot more uh, bullion podcasting. Could be good. Uh, we got where f- I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> got a few different, uh, got a few different people tuning in. Greg Clark says, uh, "Just closed my office door to my do not disturb administration time." Um, I think it was Desi before said that uh, they were hiding, um, they, they'd picked up their their kid early from kinder or something to uh, to watch the stream. Um, we've got uh, Midnight Gardeners in. Um, yeah, we've got we've got a few people uh, through James Howitt um, coming to us from the from the UK. Um, yeah, Midnight no. Gardener, your absence has been noted. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yes, for everyone asking, that is gold sitting on that uh, that there desk. It is. Yeah, you would hope so. <laughs> ah, you've mixed brands on me. Yeah. Well, oh, oh no. What have what can I've, we start the stream again? My OCD's going nuts. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've given myself a uh, uh, I've given myself a job for the future to uh, s- to have. separate those back <laughs> yeah. out. But that's all right. Um, I, I wanted a nice little pile sitting there. Oh, <laughs> uh, dear. All good fun. Um, a couple of good comments going through, and I want to grab them before yeah, I go for it. Yeah, go um, uh, I'm not even sure I understand that one. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hang on. Ripper I, I questions. A, that's yeah. why they're asking it. I sold a 10 ounce uh, 22 cooked for 381 on an auction last night. Can't sell a kilo for spot price. Prices must be high, but it's still a good time to buy, in my opinion. Wow, three eighty one for a ten ounce kookaburra. That sounds too cheap to me. Am I sounds out very of touch? cheap? That's well, pretty much on spot, isn't it? That's well, almost below for a yeah. while there. We hit thirty nine yeah. something uh, in Australian earlier this week. So that's it to to have that. It's quite quite good. I'm hoping it wasn't on one of the auction sites that charges you an oh, amount to, yeah. to do it because you've just done yourself some dough. It would have been better off flicking it off to us. Excuse me, off to us um, because free plug. We pay spot. <laughs> <laughs> you believe um, that? The guys on the Bullion Now stream said you should sell to Bullion Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have thunk that yeah, one, eh? Exactly. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, I guess the part I want to pick up on that is the fact that there is so much sellback ah, at the moment. Apparently the, so the, the question was AUD or USD for that 10-ounce cook. Yeah, it doesn't actually say. Yeah. Um, but there is so much out there at the moment and so much choice that people are being very, very selective. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but in the shop, normally where things would sell out um, or would sell relatively rapidly, I'm finding mm. far more people are being 
a, a bit more selective with what they yeah. want. It's not just a case of, well, I'm here for some silver. It's I'm here for those and I want a couple of those as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, people are getting very picky, which is good. It's not <laughs> a complaint. That's actually a good thing. So. Um, oh, good when you've got a selection as well, though, to offer yeah. rather than, all right, do you want a kangaroo or a kangaroo? Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Um, question there, Michael, about the uh, South African Big Five. Um, I missed that one. We no, had the from, elephant from the Metal Inquisitor. Not so long ago. Yeah, what's what, what's what's happening with that series? Because I think in my head we were we were planning on catching up with them in uh, Berlin, but I didn't spy them there again this year. So yeah. is it is it one we're ever likely to get through again? We got Look we got one of them in, but yeah, it, it absolutely is. I'm quite happy to get them, but I was we've been holding off, and I'd actually forgotten about it till this question. We'd been holding off because we were going to catch up with the South African Mint in Berlin. Mm. And uh, they were very mid, much like Midnight Gardener, noticeable by their absence um, over there. So it kind of got put on the back burner and never brought forward again. So we should chase some of those. Um, that's an excellent question. Or invite them to Australia for a yeah. visit. Yeah, that'd be good. Don't mind me. I'm uh, quickly preparing some things for some uh, <laughs> for some future scenes. So if you can Here pick we go. a question, this is one from Graham Sweeney. Question for Matt. Hey, look out. <laughs> um, what would happen to our economy if every Aussie taking an overseas holiday brought home an ounce of gold, leave 3K AUD in another country whilst bringing home their gold? I didn't... I didn't <laughs> what was the question? Sorry, I loaded what? you up there, mate. Yeah, um, I need a, we need a whiteboard to dr <laughs> illustrate the question. So if everyone... Everyone went overseas, uh, or everyone yep. that's going overseas, bought okay. an ounce of gold and brought it back to Australia. What would happen to our economy? Because every person would be leaving 3K overseas. Would that even... I don't think... I'm not yeah, even sure. I don't I'm think trying to think I don't think that would impact. I don't think that would impact our economy because... So, you, all right. So, let's break it down. So, you've taken your, you've taken your fiat out of Australia taken it overseas, converted that into gold, everyone, so let's say 24 million ounces, then, and they all come back to Australia. Well, Ed, what do you do? On, on that extreme, it would, it would remove a lot of, uh, a lot of um, currency out of, our, mm. out of our economy. So we wouldn't have the flexibility in the economy. But our economy, I mean, 24, even if we take it to an extreme and we say it's 24 million ounces, which it never would be, Sorry, I'm using a calculator here. <laughs> Some hardcore clicking going on over yeah. there. So we are talking about $79 billion out of our economy. That's going to hurt because you lose that volatility, that turnover, the churn. So that would seriously hurt the economy. But realistically, there's not that many Australians overseas or going overseas in the near future. Oh, with a few clever clicks of a button, I'm sure the RBA could resolve it, though. Yeah, well, this bada is bing, bada boom. It's the, been replenished. Yeah, it's not so <laughs> much the fact that they brought gold over; it's the fact mm. that they'd turn the uh, printing machines back on. But yeah, it mm. would cause a major issue for our economy on that sort of scale. Um, That'd be good to see. Maybe we can organise it. A little bullion now sponsored <laughs> project. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, unlikely to happen, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it would certainly um, it'd certainly be interesting. My question would be, has the wealth of our country changed? Changed in what sense? How do you mean? Well, we've got we've lost the currency, we've lost the fiat, but we've mm. gained the asset, the gold. So has the overall economy, as a big picture, has it actually changed at all? Oh, that's a good question. That's an interesting one because on an individual basis it has, but as that's a really good question <laughs> that you can you can probably argue that uh, effectively but on both sides does the individual does does the individual's prosperity does that the you, individual's you prosperity is the same because you've uh, assuming no movement in spot okay you've taken yeah. like you've handed over it's the same as we talk about in the shop all the time all mm. you're doing is converting one easy currency, like, you know, pieces of paper, yeah. to a fixed asset, gold, which is very easily transferable back. So the wealth has not changed. I've still got, well, $3,300 near enough at the moment yep. in my hand, whether it's in folding stuff or whether it's in gold. So my total wealth at that point has not changed. The wealth of the country has not changed, even though 
$3,300 has left the country in this example. But the velocity of our currency has changed mm. because now I'm holding it this way instead of in something that I can actually go down the milk bar and, and buy my loaf of bread with. So your velocity has slowed down of the currency. But the economy itself, hasn't the, the, the number hasn't changed. Mm. We still have the same amount of total wealth. It's just more difficult to spend. And I'll tell you what, after the week I'm having, if all 24 million people come into B and are converted into fiat, we're stopping our buyback program at that point. <laughs> I'm sure Brett would be thrilled though. <laughs> all right, well, here's a question. Since we're riffing on this, this, is a, this question has unloaded a whole can of worms and it now has me thinking, all right, hypothetically then, Michael, in the event that all of a sudden, let's take Australia, for instance, there was a mass adoption of gold as a form of savings. So yep. Australia as a nation... Well, that's what we're working for. Yeah, well, that's what we're I mean. So towards. collectively decided, okay, gold is, is what I would like to convert all of my uh, readily available fiat into. Do you think that that could potentially increase the likelihood of a government looking into a gold-backed currency? If it were... At, I'm talking at that level where, uh, as a nation, it became a known thing that in Australia, oh, everyone over there, they love storing their wealth in gold form. It, it links in with a question Marathon Stacker just put up. What happens um, if Russia, India and China make their own currency based on silver and gold? It's, it's the, the same kind of thing. If That's it. Does, well, does it, a, it well, is and it's not. Yeah. Um, I, I think... I, I actually don't think... Even if we did that, I don't mm. think the government would turn it over because as soon as they go for a, a physical backed currency they yeah. can no longer turn on the printing press and that's yeah. not in the government's best interest like i'm not trying yeah. to make any political statements here that's yeah. just a fact they like being able to say okay well we need an extra x billions of dollars because you know we want to change taxes or because we want to um, incentivize uh, one part of the community any of those types of things that yeah. governments try and do legitimately. I'm not. I'm not even trying to have a go at the government here, although I kind of am on the side. But um, legitimately, you know, there are some reasons why they do want to increase the the, the wealth or the, the amount of currency out there. So mm. I don't think any government now they've broken the tie with a physical asset. I don't think any government would voluntarily go back, which is why I find this argument about China and Russia a little bit esoterical. Because I don't think even for them it's in their best interest other than like for a China or a Russia. But if we're talking a Venezuela or somewhere like that, yeah. that would actually give confidence in their currency. It would give stability to their currency. And that actually is a benefit for a government. You know, your Argentinas of the world that are, are trying to get some stability to their currency. If they tied that, pegged it to an ounce of gold, it would absolutely provide that, that assurance yeah. to the currency. So those sort of sort of circumstances I can see happening. Did that, that was, a, that was a super questions? question. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but it it was uh, <laughs> stimulated a lot of good discussion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that was Graham. Uh, thank you very much for, for that yeah, one. Thanks, Graham. That was a ripper. Um, all right. One of the other things that I kind of wanted to uh, get us to to talk about a little bit. Um, oh, actually, Han, a few. There's there's enough people here, here now that I think it's uh, worth mentioning. One of the things that we were meant to, I was meant to, I'll take the blame for this one, mentioned on last week's stream. In fact, it was the title of the last, it was in the title of last week's stream. <laughs> you mean we got off topic? We no. may have got off topic. <laughs> Not these no. guys. And I completely <laughs> forgot to mention it. Um, is, the, is a new feature implemented by our IT team, massive shout out to them, oh, um, yeah. of Filter by Price on the Bullion Now website. After <laughs> you'd, have think, you'd, you'd have thought it would have been quite a simple thing, um, <laughs> but apparently it was quite an uh, arduous battle, but the guys have, have indeed battled through it. Um, and so now if you go to Bullion Now, you can um, search by price, highest to lowest, that kind of thing. Um, they've also added a couple of uh, other ones, so go over there and have a, have a bit of a play. Um, but yeah, if you go to the store, let's say you want to look at gold and then you, um, you can, you can say sort by price, price per ounce, um, you know, what's new, all that kind of stuff. So it has been a process, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you could see yeah, the, nice. the strands of hair that have been pulled out over this one. <laughs> it does show that we do listen. It just takes us a while to yeah. catch up with you. <laughs> So, yeah, to, to everyone, particularly on the stream that has been uh, requesting that, uh, massive thank you for <laughs> your patience. We got there in the end. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it will continue to uh, 
to, to tick off some of those highly requested features. We are we are working on them. <laughs> There's some incredible questions coming through. I just I can't. I want to comment on all of them, and I can't <laughs> keep up. <laughs> You're already going to do your hundred questions in fifteen seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Um, so uh, um, Desi's talking about the fake lunar bar, lunar dragons that are already out there. Yes. Ooh. So heaps, not heaps of those getting around, but yeah, we absolutely we've seen them. I believe Ruben, you may have one. No, he's shaking his head. The there there may have been a fake acquired for a video. Uh, and it was acquired right before those dragon ones came out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, we don't have one of the dragon ones. Right, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, here we go. This is a good question for everyone. Yeah, hit it. Does increase in, increases in crypto, does it affect silver gold sales? That is a very good question. Mm. I'm not... Uh, it's really interesting. I Okay, I can speak from my experience as of late behind the counter and say that personally I haven't seen a significant direct correlation between the two, but that's not to say that it wouldn't exist. I think oh, it's it, it it is a tricky one because I think this sort of harks back to the conversation we were having last week where um, I, like I suggested for me that crypto is sort of like uh, being in the casino whereas bullion was quite literally the, the cash out option when, when I wanted to actually realise any potential gains mm. that's when bullion entered the equation and I think that for a, uh, a number of people in the crypto arena things are getting a little wild in there at the <laughs> moment so from what I've observed there hasn't been a great deal of people securing profits for lack of a better term and i think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out i think there's a lot of hype and excitement surrounding the upcoming halving yeah so i i two two different industries in in my mind at the moment that haven't i don't know maybe you have more insight michael but i haven't seen a a world's collide yet like we did a couple of years ago when there were it felt like every other customer was coming in and there was, you know, echoes of the word crypto in <laughs> in the store, but it's not so much this time around yet, at yeah. least. I, I, I think, um, I, don't, I, I don't think there's a correlation between, I'm, I'm going to contradict myself here, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a correlation between the price of crypto and its movement and the price of gold and the demand for gold and silver. However, <laughs> I think there is a direct correlation between the hype around crypto mm. and the demand of gold and silver. That's a big one at the moment. Because yeah. we are seeing a lot of people, like there's a lot of hype around crypto, you know, Bitcoin's hitting all-time highs and, and um, you know, a lot of these other, uh, I'm trying to be polite, these other types of coins. Projects. Yeah. When, I mean, when you get a coin whose sole base is the fact that it's a dog wearing a hat. Like dog with hat. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> I'm still oh, kicking yeah. myself that I didn't get any of that. You kind of like, you know, <laughs> when you're seeing that sort of stuff and the hype around it, um, it's very much, it impacts everything. I know people that are selling houses to get into crypto at the moment. Mm. Um, and we're certainly seeing a, a good number of people um, coming into the store going, you know, I'm, I'm selling my, you know, five kilos of gold to pick up some some crypto and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm exaggerating a little bit there. They're not all five kilos. There's only a few of them. Um, but yeah, you know, they're, they're unloading their, their physical and moving it into the hype of crypto. And that always worries me because as Matt said, you know, crypto is very much this, um, even Bitcoin to a degree, particularly at the moment, um, it's very much casino-esque. I know there's a lot of talk, and we, we touched on this last week, there's a lot of talk about um, Bitcoin, crypto being the new digital gold, and I, I don't see it. I, there's too much volatility there at the moment. There's too much hype-driven. Um, I'm not saying that Bitcoin is a bad investment. I'm not saying cryptos are a bad investment. I'm just doing a comparison to, um, to y your golds and your silvers and that sort of stuff. There's a lot of hype around it at the moment. And that's my concern is because we've all seen, anyone who's been around longer than two or three years in, in any of the markets has seen crypto's legs cut out from under it and it can rapidly drop. Whereas you, you absolutely will see a drop in gold and silver, but to lose 90%, really, really? <laughs> Don't think it's going to happen. So you, you're swapping something 
um, that is a stable asset and you're moving it into a hyped asset. And that's that's the concern I have with what's going on at the moment. Um, I quickly want to hit this one, sorry, just because I'm excited for the fact that uh, I can see that it's come through here. Um, we have a Facebook uh, comment over on the live over Whoa, there from Gina. Hey. Uh, Facebook, how you going? They say, got a few of the 2021 Rectangular Dragons today on your website. They came out of the blue. I'm a very happy man. Yeah, so those that, have, that are keen watchers of the Bullion Now website will notice yeah. that Ads and I are... Making everyone's lives <laughs> difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did cop a bit of abuse from um, Brett and Con, <laughs> and I think you had a go at me at one yeah, point Yeah, I was well. going to wind you up at some <laughs> point. Because um, <laughs> we're, we're cleaning out... You know, I, I seem to say this semi-frequently, and it still cracks me up. I, we, we clean out the back of the safe is the way we term it. I mean, it can be from you know <laughs> yeah. various safes and hidey holes and that sort of stuff, but we clean it out, and invariably we find three of this and mm. 10 of that and you know one of this other coin and so we've been trickling those onto the web just to try and clear them out of the way because in the not too distant future we're going to have to do another major stock take and it's it, it's the odds and sods skews like individual types of coins that do our heads in so all these sorts of things have been appearing what amazes me is this must be the 50th time i've done this and i'm still finding coins from three years ago yeah. in a hidey hole somewhere and it's like <laughs> what <laughs> so yes um you're very welcome i'm glad we listed them i'm really glad you bought them i apologize to all staff members that then went roaming, <laughs> roaming around yeah? the, the various storage areas that we have going where are these flaming things that michael <laughs> listed this morning <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> but, uh, yeah. um, we've got a couple of people that have uh, made their way into into the store to say hi we had uh sentu georgie that says hi uh, michael and matt great to see you when i popped by a bullion now Ah, oh, nice one. I, was, I did comment on that a couple of times when both Michael and myself were in the store and people commented on that. I said, this week, it must be the first time in years that we've both been in the store <laughs> yeah, together at any right. given time. We're always sort of, <laughs> one's running in or running out. So it's been, yeah, a real, uh, a rare sight for, for people. But it's been good. It's been a lot yeah. of fun. I love it when people stop us anywhere in the store, in the corridor, out on the street and say, hey... I watch your, watch yeah. your YouTube and yeah. it's really nice just because sometimes you feel like you're talking into a void. You know, into well, some we're just, right now, we're literally looking ourselves on another <laughs> screen. It feels <laughs> like there's right. five people tops in the room right now. <laughs> so it's really well, nice we, when people I don't say, think we could fit 228. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's just really nice when people say, hey, look, I watch it. And look, I mean, it's, it's fantastic when people say, you know, I, I love what you're doing. But it's also really good when people say, have you ever thought or, you know, I didn't yeah. quite grab, you know, what you were saying there or I didn't kind of like the way you said it. So it means we can improve it because ultimately we do this. Uh, trust me, we do not make a profit out of this. Anyway, I dress this up. It's good advertising for BN, but we really don't make a profit out of it. We do it because we want to get the education out there and we want to serve the community. So if we can do it in a better way, don't be frightened of pulling us aside and saying, hey, you know, this, this might be a good way to do it. Uh, Snowstorm as well says, uh, hey. hi guys, I went into the store for he the very first today. time. <laughs> I got the pleasure to meet everyone. The best experience. Everybody is so nice and even had a quick chat with Michael. Oh, yeah. Cool. It was, it was really good to meet you, mate. Um, uh, yeah, and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm sure with context, that's fine. But it <laughs> yeah. sounds terrible <laughs> without <laughs> context. I, I can't threatening. give you context, but yeah, okay. <laughs> he knows what I mean. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> All right. It uh, was polite, don't stress. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other things that someone on uh, Twitter brought to our attention um, that I had actually completely missed is that recently um, the largest ever nu uh, documented, I'll say, um, nugget in, the, uh, in England has been found, supposedly. Let I me. Uh, England was a hot spot of... Well, I think it's, it's a not. bit of a cool spot. I think, <laughs> yeah, well, and, that's, it is, yeah. and that's why. Uh, so wow. thank, you, thank you to James for sending that through. Um, but yeah, it is a 64.8 gram nugget, which is not fallen over that. I mean, yeah. So I don't know that I'd say that. Yeah, I, I, as a claim to fame, you know, when you come up against a bloke who found the welcome stranger. Oh, I thought you were going to give <laughs> us an example of what you'd found. Oh, right. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is in spot price worth six th about six thousand nine hundred and thirty, um, and they are claiming thirty thousand pounds for it. So I guess kind of the discussion I wanted to briefly have with you guys is how how much value should be attributed to something that okay. currently it does take the 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 title for largest nugget found. Is this the um, 
Is, is this the media that's actually said it's worth £30,000? This is, I believe, the, um, the auction house that it is going through. Uh, okay, all right. So, this so is we are the, talking collective. We are talking yeah. collective, collective value. It's yeah, called okay. the, the Hero Nugget, but spelt H-I-R-O, Heroes Nugget. Um, and yeah, is that because a Japanese sold. gentleman found it? Or? Yeah. No, so it was, um, it was a bloke by the name of Richard Brock uh, from Somerset. Um, and he found it with a, a like a, a dodgy, a not working properly uh, metal detector. <laughs> I'll take his not working <laughs> <laughs> properly yeah. metal detector every day. Yeah. Yeah, all these other chumps have been doing it wrong. <laughs> that's right. You're <laughs> going out with a functional one. detector. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to beat it up a bit and make it malfunction. <laughs> that's it, clearly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you know, basically how, how much, uh, obviously, you know, this isn't something that you can necessarily measure exactly, but you know, if you're talking only, you know, just over a couple of ounces there in, um, <coughs> well, in you're assuming gold. that's actual gold. Well, a hundred percent that, that could be in, <laughs> like you it know, could be a, a purity of like 40% for absolutely. all we know. Um, so that's it. You know, uh, are they completely out of their minds for, for suggesting such a value or is the title of the largest nugget ever found in, in England documented <laughs> um, worth a significant amount? I guess that's a, that's it, a cool thing to have a little, uh, you know, a little nameplate next on. to. Yeah, until <laughs> some other bloke heads out with a broken detector and finds a bigger <laughs> one. Or someone brings one over from Australia, kicks it in their backyard with a bit say, of dirt. It doesn't feel <laughs> like a, a, an unfathomable prospect that pun intended that someone could uh yeah bring over an australian <laughs> nugget significantly <laughs> larger and bury it under a tree i just i don't i don't see the value in it uh, maybe i'm missing something um you know people collect things and pay extortion amounts of money for them frequently and surprise me um, mind you I know Matt and I would pay extortion amounts oh, of money yeah. for coins and, and banknotes. <laughs> That's and true. Like, go, it's, Are it's, you nuts? Yeah, <laughs> it, the value is in the eye of the beholder. And I think that auction houses, if they're doing their job effectively, the reality of it is auction houses are effectively a marketing agency. Yeah, so actually, if, yeah, if right. they're promoting it as such and people are quite literally buying into it, who are we to say that it's not worth that? If the marketing behind it justifies it and someone sees the value... It just takes two people to fight over it at an auction. Yeah, and you know all how of a frustrating sudden? that is in an auction. I just want to, <laughs> so I want to strangle the other person. When there's one person that keeps pushing me, one one notch forward, I always and they, I lose always, sleep about that. They thinking. always wait till the last second. Yep. like, are you all done? Are you all done? And you think, yeah, I've got it. And then they go, oh yeah, I'll go yeah, one more. Yeah, <laughs> a little, uh, oh, yeah, my girl. <laughs> little do they know it's uh, each other. It's Matt and Michael fighting. Against yeah, it most likely is. <laughs> <laughs> um, to clarify for BDK, it is not the biggest in the UK. I believe Wales and uh, Scotland have have had some larger ones. So, oh, so it's just the largest in London, <laughs> England specifically. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a, a great question here from Shannon Taylor. Do either of you have a coin or series or round that you collect every time they release a new one? What is there a series that how many have you got that both of you are loyal to? Where to, to? begin? <laughs> I was going to say uh, Matt will have a whole stream of yeah. them. <laughs> Funnily enough, a series that I actually really enjoy. Oh, oh, Ruben, what's on going on here? Oh. I feel like I'm, I'm all dizzy. I can't see what's going on. Um, a series that Clean I've actually... Glasses, <laughs> it, it, felt, it felt like that, yeah. <laughs> seeing, seeing the world as I see it without glasses. <laughs> um, a series that I've taken a shine to, and this feels like a shameless BN plug, is The Quokka. I yeah. actually think that's it's grown on me quite a bit. At first, I, I liked it, but... As the next few in the series have come along, I've any time they come through a, again and I see them again, I'm sort of fall in love. And I think because I, as is often the case with collectors as a whole, when you have any form of connection to something, it sort of strikes that chord with you. A lot of people yeah. like collecting, you know, coins from the year they were born or a year of significance to them. And for me, it reminds me of my trip to Rottnest Island where I saw some quokkas. And so anytime I see something from that series, it reminds me of that and... I have a little smile. Yeah, well, we still all think that the quokka is your spirit animal. And mate. I like that as well. <laughs> I secretly love it. When, but I've heard that in the shop when someone has said, oh, I want one of the Mac coins. Yeah, like, yeah that's, that's pretty cool. At first, I thought it was a wind-up. Now I take it in my stride. I quite like it. <laughs> uh, that's a perla. Now, look, my problem in answering that question is I don't collect, as a rule, I don't collect current series. Mm. So it's not like I'm ever hanging out for the next one. Having said that, I, d I have got a collection of opals. 
like the Opal series. Oh, I thought you just um, meant General Opal. No, 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 not General <laughs> Opal. Um, and I, th- I suspect I'm going to collect the, um, the Lunar Dragon bar that they brought out this perfect oh, start yep. with this year because yep. I think that one's a winner. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, that. But most of my collecting is older things. I like old banknotes, like mm. particularly the pre-decimal stuff. So yeah. I find it fascinating that they, like back when banks could just make their own notes, like literally make their own notes. Yeah, like the pre-federation um, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I love that sort of stuff. So that sort of stuff I collect. Um, I love the sovereigns because I love the story and the history yeah. behind the sovereign and, and stuff like that. So it's not so much waiting for next year's release. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's more chasing yeah, issues. going back, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, another interesting one from Marie Cathy, and I don't think this is one we have an, an answer to, but um, they say, do you remember when there was a big silver heist between Sydney and Melbourne? Whatever happened with that, does anyone know? Uh, are we talking that was three years ago? Yeah, I remember. Uh, there was on a, was truck, a year I or two, yeah. It wasn't a heist, though. It was, it was it a bunch of, the back of yeah, the truck. A bunch of five kilo bars? Well, I mean, it's kind of left up to in- interpretation. You know, was, yeah. it, was it someone uh, parachuting in mid-truck delivery? It cut a a real <laughs> D.B. Cooper type situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We know that they started on the truck in Sydney. And when the truck got to Melbourne, they weren't there. What happened in between? We actually have no idea. Yeah. Um, One for the ages. Netflix what? should get onto that doco. <laughs> Unreal. Based on the uh, based on a yeah. true story. Maybe um, no, it's a gap for us. We can we can uh, produce one. Speaking of potential, uh, you've just reminded me, Michael, with that dragon bar, that rectangular bar. I wonder if, and I I might just be jumping the gun here. I don't feel like there's been really much awareness uh, of that bar out there in the market, and Perth certainly haven't put it up on a pedestal as the beginning of a new series or anything of that nature. So I wonder if it has the potential to be a little bit of a dark horse. Like, yeah, I know yeah. we're in the year of the dragon. And it's obviously a main... It's a sort of a highlight, just anything dragon-related. But that bar in particular strikes me as something that could... Be a sleeper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just given how little it's talked about and... Yeah, particularly if it even if it doesn't become a new series, just as a standalone yeah, item, as a standalone, it's quite interesting. I actually think it'll be worth more as a standalone. So yeah. I'll actually be semi stoked if they mm. don't actually make it into a series. But the indications out of Perth, and I can't speak for Perth. I'm not a spokesman for them or anything along those lines. But yeah. the indications out of Perth are that it it may become a or that it will become a a, a series going forward. Mm. Um, so it's I I particularly with the popularity of the um, old Oriana bars. Yeah. So even to this day, the Oriana bar is um, sought after in its various sizes and, and mm-hmm. formats. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that one either way. I, it's a good coin. I don't... I, I, I like it. Um, or a good bar. Yeah. Um, and I like it from that perspective. It's not much dearer than a Perth Mint bar of gold. Like the premium is not <coughs> ridiculous. They've yeah. come in at a really good price point. So even if it, even if it does nothing, I'm still going to be happy mm. with it. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it's got potential, and I, I honestly think it is the, the sleeper. Um, the fact that it's got potential that in a in a year or two, or more likely three or four years time, mm-hmm. where that that collection actually starts to become very popular, people are going to go. Well, I need to complete the collection. I, I want the, you know, I want the the whole lot, um, and they'll start tracing chasing down the dragon. So. Mm. And I think this is on the f- on the flip side of, and it's not to, not to, uh, I guess roast the individual that raised it, but in terms of collector premium, I actually feel like that's a good example of highlighting whether or not it becomes uh, highly sought after down the track. I feel like it's a great example of the the people that do identify uh, potential opportunities with a potential series like that. I feel like that's sort of the reward that you get mm. four or five years down the track when you've held on to it and you thought it was a winner. When people complain, oh, no, that's gone up too much in price. I think, well, if, if you've, if you've, you've been, been... You've been loyal. Exactly. If you've yeah. been collecting or, or stacking since five years ago and you saw that and you didn't buy it, that's fine. It may or may not have become a collectible, but since it did, that's kind of the reward. That's half the, the fun of it. So I think that's that's a good thing to highlight. Mm. I like uh, uh, Desi's 
a potential point there. He says, too many dragons, I think. People will look for one in the years ahead, maybe. Yeah. I, wonder, I, I, I think that's it. I think there's yeah. there's a lot of dragon products out there at the moment. People aren't mm. necessarily sure which ones are going to have legs, which one are going to continue down the line, and that's it. To, to be told that maybe Perth will keep this one running, I think it might take even just one more release into this series before people go, oh, hang on a minute. This this yeah. is one that they're starting up. This is one that's... And then that is when people will be going back to... This is all speculation, of course, not financial yeah. advice or that kind <laughs> yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Put the, can you put the little thing? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, if I can find my button. <laughs> yeah. So, look, uh, and I think you've hit the nail on the head. It, it is absolutely, it's being, it's being swamped by all the Dragon products that mm. are being released at the moment um, or this year. But I, I think, and Matt and I were having a discussion about something else um, earlier on today. And I think it's the way you take any investment, um, if you're buying it for that, um, is you look at potential upside, but you also look at, your potential downside. And I think the upside in this case is almost unlimited. If the collectors get hold yeah. of it, you know, it could really run hard. If the collectors don't get hold of it and it just becomes a one-ounce bar, I, I, I'm get, without looking at the website, I can't tell you, but you won't have paid any more than about $50, $60, $70 over what you would have paid for a normal bar anyway. Mm. So that's that's my downside risk is that $50, $60. Bucks. Well, mate, to me, $50, $60 bucks downtime like yeah. downside and who knows what upside. That's abs- To me, that's a far better risk than, than pretty much anything else I can put my money into. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with that for me. It's also funny that you highlight exactly that because I had a very... I should have told you, as I knew you would have chuckled. Uh, someone came in and they were buying some buyback gold and I, I gave all the, the quotes for the prices on the various sizes and then they said, okay, and now can you give me a quote on what you would buy it back at? And I did, and they stared at me, and they said, "How does his business function? <laughs> <laughs> how, do, how do you guys keep the lights on and the doors open?" Some days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the volume would probably make your head spin a little. It's certainly not just a uh, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the volume. There must be. Yeah. I don't know, without counting it out, two kilos of gold there. Yeah, so probably 60 ounces. 60 plus ounces just sitting there. And like, I'm not trying to say, look, you know, this is chump change or anything like that, but we have 60 ounces lying around that Rubes could grab and dump on the counter. Not lying around, I shouldn't say it that way. <laughs> so with 60 ounces in Surplus. the safe <laughs> yeah. that, that um, Ruben could grab a bag of because we need 60 ounces on hand to churn really, really rapidly. At uh, least. Yeah. <laughs> Scares me some days. Oh, <laughs> Ruben, did you touch on something when you said uh, I interpreted a pun when you said if any of these dragon products have legs? <laughs> is that a, is that a segue? <laughs> it absolutely can be. Very smoothly <laughs> done there, Matt. No one will notice it. <laughs> Very controversial issue coming in hot. This could be worth uh, I, worth I a poll. I don't. I don't understand know what the, the question issue. is. I just understand that there's an issue, and someone said. I'd like to hear Matt's hot take on this. <laughs> and I haven't actually looked at what the the issue is or the the topic, but Ruben assures me it's going to be... Yeah, it was Goat's one. What about the wonky legs or something like that? Yeah, the... On the Some, some wonky legs. I, I haven't had a good look. Ruben's Come on, Rubes. working tirelessly <laughs> behind the scenes here to... You want me to draw you one on a piece of paper? <laughs> <laughs> Any second now. He's, he's clicking Any frantically. Any second now. Any <laughs> second now. <laughs> I've got it, but he's it's not letting up. me move it. It's not letting me move <laughs> the image. Yeah. Um, I can put it up in the corner, and that's really frustrating. <laughs> oh, that's, can you blow it up at all? That's what I'm attempting. That's, that's yeah. all blown up. So, look, there's a bit of an issue about the wonky legs. And I don't see it, because to me, that's a very asian design dragon. They all have legs like that. Is it perhaps the placement, given that... Uh, it I, depends I don't on your interpretation of the movement of the Yeah, I don't dragon. know if people realise, but a dragon and is actually a mythical creature. It doesn't that's matter true. if it can't walk. Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, can't they fly? That's the whole, that's well, the whole have deal. Have you seen the wings on the... On the no, they don't need wings. Tell you, aerodynamically, they don't fly. <laughs> What are you doing, yeah, Ruben? Is this all going up? Is yes, it, it's this? all going up on oh. screen. <laughs> Did not realise it was all going up, but there we go. <laughs> I have it large, finally. 
Yeah, oh, he's having a moment in the corner that there. That was You've a good little behind the scenes. That was a, a clear insight into the inner workings of Ruben's mind. <laughs> when, we, when we just casually say, just chuck that up, just do that. That's what goes <laughs> that's through his mind. That's what's going on in the background, yeah. So, <clears> bring <throat> it back to topic. What do you think of the wonky <laughs> legs? Uh, yeah, I, I like it. I think it fills the, the design nicely, having effectively a leg in each quartile of the design. It feels like a balanced uh, design. I quite like it, but is the pro- is the issue that we're addressing here the the alignment of them that it's not two and two? I don't know. Go throw up your comment on there, mate, because I think you're the one that um, it you're the one that flagged it with <coughs> us. It wouldn't be. He says, to walk. imagine looking down at a lizard. The legs are side by side. Uh, then look at the image. The legs are staggered. So he's saying that they're not actually in in line with each other. If you were to look at it top down, one would be here and then there and then. Don't they call this poetic license? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see his point, but it, it doesn't <clears throat> like it's. Mm. It's not an untraditional, if that's a word. It's mm. not an untraditional design. Um, I wouldn't have thought. I don't think they're going for practicality. I don't think they're saying, well, you know, let's let's draw something that could fool someone into <clears throat> thinking that it's actually going to function out there. Yeah. Um, I think they're going for, yeah, well, artistic license. That's probably a better <laughs> yeah. way to put it than poetic license. <laughs> um, I, I think it's artistic license. I, I think you're right. I think it's weird where they've stuck the legs. But yeah, agree. It would struggle to walk. But, I, I, yeah, I've never looked at any of the dragon designs and thought about it in terms of is this a practical <laughs> running animal? Because in my mind, I thought the dragons, uh, according to, to tradition, were always a flying animal. It wasn't. Uh, they were just decorative. They don't even need their legs. They're scooting around in the sky. So don't yeah, P- Peter Locke's comment, last time I saw a real dragon, it looked nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, no one's ever accused, like said, a Picasso doesn't work because, you know, anatomically that doesn't work. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> so, yeah. However, there's nothing wrong with getting passionate about designs because I do it a lot. <laughs> so don't, take this, really? don't, don't let this take any wind out of your sails. <laughs> if you're bothered... You let rip. This is a place to do it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, everyone knows I don't. I tend not to hold back either. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Do we have some topics that we need to cover? There's we just so like three hundred of them. Yes, yeah. fly up on the There's screen. There's so many good questions and statements and comments <laughs> being made up. There really yeah. is. And sorry for everyone we're not getting to. I think we will need to hit a lot of these in the uh, sixty questions in. Five seconds. Five, mm. However many seconds Michael decides this 7. week. 7.2 seconds today. There we go. Yeah, wow. Um, and I wanted to talk about this video that oh, we released. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Actually, more to get a, a poll from those. Um, yes, a poll. A poll to, to, uh, to see what people thought. Because basically the idea of the video was that um, Perth Mint had released a 10 coin set um, with a silver plated, sorry, a gold plated silver coin. Um, and it's the one on the right there. And Michael and I were like, is this, you know, is this something to be, is this heading down a scary line or not? And some people said, absolutely. Um, and then other people said, you know, you guys are making, you know, Storm in a Teacup, which, you know, fair I, enough. I want to say, and I don't think I said this in the video, I actually want to say I really like the set. I think they've done a mm. bang up job with it. It's mm. really good. However, my query was gold plated coins, should they be a, a path that we are heading down? Um, and I, I, they make me nervous because of mm. the the potential for someone to pull it out of the set and then to sell it on a, a sell it underhandedly as a gold coin because the average mug punter out there isn't going to realise that this is not a gold coin unless they look close. It, it, it does say silver on the back. Okay, let's let's be completely open about it and I am making in some ways a storm in a teacup but the potential is there the, the precedent has been set I think you may I think you're overreacting I in think this example I think I am but I, it's the precedent that's, that's setting that yeah. it's concern that's concerning me I would suggest I'll tell oh, this look at this we're actually clashing I think <laughs> that it's if you're investing specifically gold I think it, it probably highlights what we always encourage people to do, which Look is to split. educate yourself. 50, 50. When it, yeah, nice. This is yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> I think you are responsible, and this is sort of goes towards owning gold and uh, owning bullion in general. Fundamentally, you're taking control of your f- finances, 
quite literally and physically in that regard. And I think similarly, you, it's your responsibility to seek out an appropriate education and understanding of what it is that you're buying. So if you're, if you're cruising around the likes of Gumtree and you see one of these up and think, oh, geez, it's a gold coin for half of spot price. I'm a genius. It's a very unfortunate reality and hopefully with the prevalence of channels like this, people can get their heads around it and understand why that deal is fundamentally flawed. But those people, and this sounds bleak, but those, I think those people are going to get, unfortunately, raw deals whether or not products like this exist. Those mm. people, pe- people that are seeking to take advantage of people, whether it's a coin like this or a fake bar that they've acquired from somewhere they'll try it on regardless look i i actually agree with what you're saying um but i guess my heart goes out to frequently goes out to the the people who are just getting started in in the industry like Mm. you know just getting started in the community where you know they don't know a lot yet they're just feeling it out they just want to test the waters and i'll just buy one here and one there particularly with gold in the news and potential people coming in for that i need it and i need it now factor and yeah. then we're not we, yeah. we don't we don't push that but it is something that people will sometimes enter this market with that thought in mind of i've been told by someone that i, I really need to get onto this gold or silver stuff and so sometimes it can lead to very snap decision purchases without you know, fil- going through some of those filters, like, yeah, is mm. this what it is? This product, what it says it is? Because, yeah, like, there's nothing. The whole reason this channel exists, almost the whole reason this channel exists, is to stop people being ripped off. It's to educate people, to get the message out there, to to get people to look at it. If you have a bad experience at the start, well, yeah. you have a bad experience at any point. It can blow you out of the water, but particularly. When you're just getting your, you know, your first legs under you, yeah, it can really blow you out the water. Look, like I said, Perth Mint have not done the wrong thing with this. No, they have been very open and honest about exactly what it is. And somebody's mentioned the Diwali up there as well, and they've done that with the Diwali. Yep. They have been, and the, the set looks brilliant. They've done a fantastic job. I'm not trying to criticise Perth Mint or the design of it or anything along those sort of lines here. What I am doing is saying I don't like, I don't like the precedent it sets. I don't like... I mean, you've worked in the shop long enough. You've yeah, seen yeah. fakes come through yeah, the door. Yeah. And it, it it kills me to tell someone that they've got a fake. Never yeah. mind the, the reaction on the other side of the counter. I just, I just don't like that direction. I, I love when they, they do the gilding. I love when they do a mm. reverse gilding. I love the rose gilding. I love all those things that they're experimenting with because that enhances the design. Mm. I don't believe this enhances the design at all. I think it's... I, I think it's taking a silver coin and trying to make it look gold. And it, I don't think car. that <laughs> yeah, I don't think that enhances the design at mm. all. No, the market is not screaming for that design in gold. Yeah, that's fair. So perhaps do you would you then let's put on your designer hat, would you have gone for just a conventional gilding of the actual dragon component? What what I think what I think would have gone nuts is exa- I think what Peter Locke is saying there. A silver with a gold dragon on it. Yeah, so or, just or like, like a conventional yeah, so gilding. They, yeah, but so they, they but, they this, but the silver, the, the gold design in previous years, not necessarily just the dragon, but the gold design has been a lot more popular than the silver one in previous years. I think mm. if you put the gold design on a silver <coughs> coin, I think that would just go crazy. Even just the design, not even playing with different metals, but just the design, I think that would be, yeah, I think a lot of people would be in support of that. Yeah, look, uh, and I think I, I, reading that comment, I would say that he's going more along the traditional... <coughs> Um, the gilding kind gilding of gilding, where they actually pick the feature, so the animal in yeah. it. They actually pick that and they do it in a, a, a in a gold, and it actually draws the design out. And I can see that because artistically, not that I have an artistic bone in my body, but artistically, that actually draws the design out, makes it almost mm. three dimensional, yeah. and looks really good. And I can I get why they would do that, but to to cover the whole lot in gold, I just I don't see it. But I. I absolutely take Delita's comment there, and I hope it doesn't run off the screen. We can't run an industry for the lowest common denominator player in the market. And I think he's spot on with that comment. Yeah. And I think, I know I've just contradicted myself, but <laughs> he's right. We can't. But I think the flip side of that is we also have to be conscious of 
where things lead and the the examples that we're setting and i just i'm not comfortable with this example and and also it's like we're we're taking the responsi- responsibility on ourselves to then be a, a, a tool of education mm. for those people to mm. get them up to speed with everyone else where they are then no longer the the uh the yeah the the the, the, the issue the potential for um for it to be a problem yeah I wonder if on the flip side of all of this, let's take a look at it from the perspective of I'm a really enthusiastic silver stacker and I like the collectible uh, side of silver uh, accumulation and coins and what have you. I've never owned a gold coin and this is the first gold in appearance coin that I've had and then you can enjoy the aesthetic of it and that could potentially... Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So there is an enjoyment uh, aspect of it and potentially, I guess... uh, the, the potential of a gateway into purchasing gold coins for people that have previously only had an interest in silver. Mm. It might sort of encourage them to take a look at it. But gateway drug? Yeah. Look, it, it's, <laughs> it's going to split the community. And to be honest, it's... Well, it literally did. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it has. It's, it was near enough to a 50-50. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and look, I've I got to be honest, I'm on the fence with this one. I love... I actually love the set. I love the collection. I think it's beautiful. I think they've done a great job with it. Um and the the other half of me is going. Uh. <laughs> well, I know I know we've been I know we've been on this for a while, but I, I kind of want to handball within this topic um, because we had a couple of people mention um, a a potential version of this getting around in the one ounce, um, and I believe it was Metal Inquisitor uh, sent through uh, these these photos here um, of of a set of these dragons without the uh, the gold plated one um, but a set there of the the nine in one ounce and I uh, just saw the uh, the design on the back there with the uh, um, with the colored bullion version of the dragon that looking quite cool for itself um, but yeah uh, no talk of release of this in like a set or anything within Australia um, we were doing some discussion before as to if we thought this was a set released within just China, because I know someone said it was only mainland China that it was released. Mm. Um, or your theory, Michael, was that it was just an assembly of of those coins. I, I believe it's just like a of, private of the individual releases. Yeah, somebody's actually put together their own set, is yeah. my guess. But I, I, the first time I saw this was when Ruben drew it to my attention earlier this morning. So um, I don't know a heck of a lot about it. But as far as I'm look, at first glance and very very surface research. It's just somebody's put together a collection of the coloured one-ounce dragons from Perth Mint. Mm. Yeah. People so. are saying you can buy it as a set sold in China. Well, uh, yeah, oh. okay. By someone, it could be an individual or someone. It could be a company in China that's actually... You know, there's nothing to stop us buying um, a, a series of, of something from Perth and putting it in our, in our own box and making it look fancy and then selling it as a set. Mm. Um, so it's, it's someone, whether that be a company or an individual... I don't. I may stand corrected on this, but I don't believe it's a release um, in conjunction with Perth Mint or anything along those sort of lines. I was going to say, if you um, if you do have, if you do find a link or something like that um, that you want to share with us, and it through to live at bullionnow dot com dot au, and I can mm. uh, we can take a look. See how quick he is when he's yeah, unreal. It's dynamite. No Done that through before, yeah. Multiple screens. Yeah. We just went straight to it. <laughs> it was one time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's got legs on it, that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was another comment. Uh, can we change topic on dragons? Yeah, go for it. Okay, I think, so uh, it'll how be a welcome successful change. was the alien release? It looked crazy from my end. That's from Desi. What, yeah. are, what are our thoughts on that one? I think I blinked and missed it. <laughs> I think that was that was nuts. It did it kind of come quick. and go very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it did. Um, so the gold one we're specifically referring to mm. here um, sold out humongously quickly and we we knew it would like we just <laughs> I, I would suggest that we were one of the larger allocations in the world of it i, I don't know that for a fact but just we'd by the have number to be, we've yeah, got, statistically we'd have to be <laughs> statistically we'd have to other than the manufacturer themselves i'd say we were probably the largest um but we knew that we could have sold 10 times 50 times our allocation without a blink of an eye um so it went crazy. Um, the silver went well. Uh, we still, I believe, not looking at the website, I believe we still have some silver left, but we did bring in a bucket load of them. Yeah, um, I think you're right, actually. Yeah, I did um, sell just a few. I hope I was allowed to. Sold a couple in the shop before coming on stream. So yeah. Look, I think I think we have a like a few hundred left, mm. which sounds like a lot. 
but it's not when you're dealing with a shop. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think we've only... I don't want to give exact numbers because I, I haven't looked it up, but it would be, you know, within kind of in that 200 sort of area, I think, um, left, which isn't many. They'll go over the next couple of weeks. So I was fairly safe with that one where I said the silver wouldn't sell out and uh, it, it would take a few days or a yeah, few weeks. Wedge towel was, cool yeah, wedge comments, yeah. <laughs> which made Ruben really arc up because <laughs> <laughs> after the wedge tail fiasco oh there you go somebody's looked on the website there must be 645 and there'll be a few left in the store so there's probably give or take there's probably 700 left <laughs> one must have just sold the 644 <laughs> on there <laughs> um a couple of questions still around that set um uh, someone saying that perth haven't released all the colored coins yet so how is it possible for well, to, look, to I, be a total set yeah, of okay. I don't know is the short answer. The longer answer is most likely this was, uh, if that's the case, either these are fakes and I can't tell from a distance um, or alternatively, uh, it's been a private mintage that they've organised from the Perth Mint to, mm. to produce. Fishing for Silver's question. What coin is most worldwide accepted without issue? The Perth Kangaroo, American Eagle, Canadian Maple. Gold or silver? That silver. Happens. They've said fishing for silver, so I'll say silver, but... I can wait for clarification. Eagle. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't think that you could say that there is one. I'd say you could. There's I think, one. I yeah, think it, you've got to. That's yeah. the question. You're only allowed one. <laughs> but I think it reaches a stage where it's okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm only going to accept government issued coins, and so yeah. it will include the, those lists. Yeah. I think it's the top. What is it? Five. So eagle, um, kangaroo. Maple, Maple Britannia, Britannia, Philharmonic. Oh, I'm probably Kruger answer. Yeah, so it's probably six. Yeah. yeah. That's a good but question. Which one would be most widely <laughs> accepted, do you suspect? Uh, they'd all be accepted equally no, widely. One has you can only have one. Let's say the, all the <laughs> others have to get uh, well, demonetized. If, if you if you define it down to Desi's, the eagle would be more recognized around the mm. world. And Kane's saying by volume as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely by volume. But the, the American market is humongous. Mm. Um, and they are, not a criticism, they are very parochial. So they will buy an eagle before they'll buy anything else yeah. as a rule. Um, so not yeah, not for any other reason than it's a good idea to yeah. buy. I always suggest people buy kangaroos, not because I think they're a fantastic design, although Matt will contradict me on that <laughs> it's an award-winning design mate <laughs> it's it's not even an opinion it's yeah. a fact <laughs> and, uh, you're right <laughs> but it's um you know it's the cheapest thing of that of the government issues in australia because it's our local product so it always it's it's almost always best to go with your local product um a couple of questions there about what stock we're getting in and things a few people asking about some of the royal mint stuff i saw someone before asking about the um the tudors um, and <laughs> someone else, uh, James Doe, there asking for the new Myths and Legends coin, um, as well as the Perth Mint Rectangular Dragons. Have we heard anything about those? The Rectangular oh, Dragons? Yeah, yes. what's the story there? Um, they can't be too far away, but they're not. They're certainly not on the sheets yet. I'm not going to let you gloss Ooh. over the Royal Mint thing that easily, and I don't think the people watching are going to either. <sighs> yeah, I recall last week saying, yeah, we'll get a monster box of those in. Yeah, we'll get a monster box of that. Look, I, I, can't, <laughs> I cannot tell you how frantic this week has been. Yeah. So I can't give you an update on any more than I said last week because I haven't gone near anything like that this but week. It is it is absolutely still on the on the cards. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, interesting question there from Michael Carroll. Why don't Pamp make coins, or at least round like you know the, the classic kind of you know a standard bullion coin or something like that. Mm. <laughs> they just tooled up for bars. Yeah, that's their their niche. They um, they don't have a an agreement with the Swiss bank um, or the central bank of Switzerland, mm. whatever that's called. Um, yeah, they they just don't. That's not their market. It's not their place. Um, there was a question there from Aussie Dropper. Any more detail on the Ram Lunar Dragon investment coins? Well, I think we decided last week they dropped it. Uh, well, that was well. Yeah, no, we were talking wait. about the 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 gold. The gold. Um, yeah. Oh, which like someone phoned dropping. through and said it's happening. Oh, okay. I don't know if I was getting wound up. I didn't fact check okay. it. <laughs> but, uh, it was specifically said to me that it's. Was this it, someone it was from the Royal Australian Mint, or was this someone? No, that was it was just, just a someone from the skate park, effectively. <laughs> but 
Well, I mean, that's effectively someone from the skate park told us they weren't. Well, exactly. <laughs> We need, we need to check our sources a little more diligently in future. But just, just Googling it, I'm still finding that original article that, that mentions that it wasn't on there, yeah. that like the, the one ounce wasn't listed. So um, they certainly haven't done a good job at promoting, promoting it if they have changed their minds on that. Um, but if anyone does have any uh, more solid information, please feel free to let us know. Um, does BN ever do a stock take sale? If you have too much stock of a product. Like no really? such thing as too much stock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'd argue that. There's too much. <laughs> there's too much. We currently have a couple of hangovers where we've got too much of a type of stock, mm. like mm. a type of coin. Um, look, we, we don't do a stock take sale. We certainly get behind the, and it grates me to actually to admit to this, but we actually do get behind the um, Black Friday sale. Mm. Um, we usually try and do something there. Um, otherwise it's just random. Somebody catches me in a good mood or a bad mood and says, we've got too many of those. And I go, ah, we'll special them. Yeah. <laughs> and off we go. <laughs> and off we go. And I cause chaos and yeah. I forget to tell everyone. So either I forget <laughs> to tell the guys on the phones and yeah. I tell the guys in the shop. So the guys in the shop are fine and the guys on the phones go nuts at me or vice versa. <laughs> uh, one or the other happens. <laughs> So, or sometimes I just tell no one, I just release it onto yep. the web and everyone comes and cracks it with me. Yeah, it's good fun. <laughs> Michael, there's a couple of people waiting on those cod bars. Yeah, yeah. they're going to be super cool. Is there any update on those? Have we... No, look, well, we don't ask we, me for updates this are week. We, are we getting them? <laughs> yeah, or is the, it the, the intent a is potential. So we, we, don't, we haven't firmed up an order at this juncture i can't even actually answer that question i know that so it's possible we strongly <laughs> as far as i'm aware the Thanks last meeting i that. had we good. strongly said that we we got them but i can't actually swear that the order was actually placed because i haven't been keep, oh, keeping up with i all cannot that. recall was <laughs> either confirm nor one. deny <laughs> well this might be a question for you ruben those bars did they have um, I, I don't know if i'm making this up but was there a qr code on those bars that linked to a a cosmetic item, or did I make that up? No, that is a thing. Oh, so that they, is a they thing. They come okay. with a they come with a, an in-game item as well. I'm not sure exactly if it's just a code or how that works, but yeah, they they do oh, come with. A I wonder what will happen with that in terms of on selling. Yeah, when you it, it would it would have to just be a single use only thing. So yeah, you would you would lose that yeah. kind of. I mean, that happens with with other games and things like that. With with cereals within yeah. them is that's it. You you, you essentially so lose them on the second hand market. So at Bullion now we won't be insisting that your trinket that gets attached to no, your gun in game be transferred <laughs> well, I, don't, I, I don't know <laughs> uh, there was some game I played at once upon, is, it, is it COD you get little yeah, sti- yeah it yeah, literally it, is a trinket it, it's a thing you get trinkets on your guns <laughs> and uh, so we won't be insist- we won't set up a bullion now no. call of duty account to <laughs> transfer the, the trinkets All right, good, to, good to know <laughs> so Aussie Drop Bear does LCS have a phone number not Michael's mobile um, they actually have a one three hundred number, which they've just set up, hey. and I actually don't know if it works yet <laughs> or what it is. <laughs> so, so um, <clears throat> do, well, do you want to? I'm going to put it out there. Well, do you Bailey's wanna... probably tearing her hair out trying to get near a ca- keyboard <laughs> right now to stop me from saying it. Yeah, do you wanna... she remotely shut down the stream? <laughs> do you want to send it to me and I can put it in chat? Or that's probably a better <laughs> idea, isn't it? Um, um, and uh, they can probably, I'm, I'm sure that that will be updated on their website. Speaking of, um, Silver uh, Sushi is tearing into it a little bit. Michael, surely adding the new feature on the BM website was more challenging than changing the color coordination on the L- LCS website. Can we please oh. make that happen, please? Uh. No comment. <laughs> I'm frustrated beyond belief with that thing. Um, it is one that we absolutely, absolutely do still want to uh, <laughs> do still want to happen. Um, so yeah, duly noted. Um, sorry, I'm I'm being very rude. I'm trying to type the phone number into Ruben there. Um, yeah, duly noted. It is absolutely something that we have to get on top of. There's just there's only so many balls I can keep in the air at the same time, and uh, I'm hitting maximum at the moment. So it's certainly yeah. very very important and needs to be done very very soon. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it's absolutely a fair criticism. There we go. I've added that, and like I said, should be o- up over on their, their website as well. And I'll apologise if it's an engaged tone or something like that right up front, because <laughs> it may not have been activated 
because it's only in the last week or so that we've actually got that sorted out, uh, that new number sorted out for LCS. But um, give it a crack, see if it rings. Bailey will answer it or Sylvia or someone with a smiling voice um, will answer it. Um, Until the hundredth call comes <laughs> through in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and if not, um, it will be active next week because I'll get down there and make sure it's active next week. Good stuff. Um, do you get? Do you have a big allocation of the one twenty fifth anniversary platinum coin? Surely, of all people, to get a whopper allocation of that, We've you must got a be. Decent allocation. Yeah, you'd be and top I, dog on that front. I, re- I don't know about that, but um, <laughs> we're, cer- we're certainly getting a decent chunk of them. And I, I really like. Uh, we can't do the design yet. We can't show it until the second of April, I believe it is. Um, but it's it's a beautiful design. Um, and we, we've got we've got a good chunk. I don't know if it's enough. Um, I don't know. What do you reckon the response is going to be for this? So hard to gauge this kind of thing. There yeah. have been many times where I've been caught out anticipating that something will go bananas. You know what? Uh, there was a good example of something that I whiffed that I expected would go bananas, which was the... Um, I've forgotten the terminology that was used. It was sort of the inverted gilding, the kangaroo. The reverse guild. The reverse guild. I thought that would be wildly popular, but it, it sort of just went neutral. I think I just get excited. Funnily enough, I get excited any time I see something different. <laughs> so I, I think I'm perhaps a bad uh, indicator for that type of thing. But <laughs> there's always something that I've learned in the numismatic industry Every not only every year, every day is the anniversary of something significant. Mm. So it's very hard to determine what anniversary will resonate with people. Yeah. And but this one I think's got legs. Like, I mean, we we know that the um, the lunar platinum is mm. always insanely popular yeah. and sells out. Oh, in Oh, sorry. Were well, we speaking specifically about the platinum? Yeah. Ooh, I actually like how, the whole the series. Mintage? Five thousand. I think five thousand will be enough. I think it'll be a good. I think it'll be a good strong release. But I think five thousand will satisfy the market. It'll satiate the masses. Oy. Given that, oh well. Listen to those <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> G- uh, the, my yardstick for that is how many they do of the proof lunar, which is about three hundred, hundred and fifty or three hundred. We're talking. Pr- th- these are bullion coins. These are bullion platinums. I thought we were talking proof. No. No, no, no. This is a Let me back okay. it up. Let me All recalibrate right. so my whole brain let, let then. Me, let me tell you as much as I can about the series on camera. Okay? okay. Yeah. So they're producing three coins. It's a celebration of the Perth Mint 125th anniversary. Yes. Okay. Hit very close to the mute button here, Roops, just in <laughs> case I ever step the mark. <laughs> I'm not sure what the mark is. <laughs> oh, we're, we're about to <laughs> march right over it. So they're producing a one ounce silver yes. of 150,000. Yep. They're producing a one ounce gold of 25,000 mm-hmm. and a one ounce platinum of 5,000. It's a corker of a design. The platinum will be, the, I agree now. I've, I've totally it's, it's misinterpreted. It's a bullion release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with okay. it. That's going to be bananas. Sorry, Ruben. It's my fault. I it's, move around too released. much. So embargo finishes on the tw- on the 2nd of April mm. and, and availability date is the 9th of April. And what are the odds that we will have them on the 9th of April? First batch arrived today. Oh. <laughs> you guys hear that? Yeah, this I is even, a I'm, I'm first. shocked. I, 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 for once, I've been, I'm. I'm been, I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you say? I've been trying Jordan to slide that into conversation all stream because I am so excited that Perth Mint and us coordinated enough to actually start Woo-hoo. getting stock to us early. Now, whether they're going to get enough stock to us early is a different argument. Why, well, even the so, the fact that we have any, I'm, I need a lay down. <laughs> That's unreal. How exciting. I get to film them before release time. Yeah, oh, yeah. So this good. is great. You're going to see one happy camper. Yeah. yeah. When I'm out there actually saying, look, this is what it looks like. Well, not yeah. that big. No it's more artist's impression, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's very exciting. Anyway, 5,000, one ounce platinum. What do you reckon? Yeah, that will not be enough. Uh, that's going to be super popular. Mm. That's uh, this would be the f- w- this would be among the first outside of the conventional kangaroo and Luna. They don't do. Th- it's been a long time since the Perth have branched out beyond. G- gee, going back, the first thing that comes to mind are things like the animals, like the um, the platypus, the platypus and the like emu, nineteen, like the early nineties kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> like that's that's going back. 
I can't decades. Think, yeah, yeah, I can't think of any any departure from the those two. And that and only I mean the the kangaroo one is an unlimited, although we know it's limited by year. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the Luna, which is insanely popular. Yeah. And is a relatively recent um, kickoff. They they started that with the mouse, so it's only what's that five years old. Yeah. Uh, or four. Yeah. Thereabouts. Yeah, four or five years old, um, insanely popular, and that's limited to 5,000 as well. So it's going to be interesting. This, this my one concern with it, mm-hmm. it's a corker of a, I think it's a nice design. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a good product. It's at a good price. My only concern is in comparing it to the Luna is that it doesn't have the history of the Luna series. It's got the history of 125 years of the Perth Mint, mate. What are you talking about? It doesn't have history. (laughs) Absolutely it does, but it's not part of, like, once you buy the the mouse, you've got to buy the next one out. But therein lies the the appeal. That it's only a one I just want one. I don't, perhaps I'm not like you. I'm not a platinum bug. Maybe I just have a a passing interest in it. I don't want to get roped in to an entire series, a commitment of that magnitude. I just want one yeah, and I, I don't think they're going to do one for the 126th anniversary. No, I so I actually <laughs> I would I would argue the the flip side of that in mm. in that I think there is tremendous value in the knowledge that it's a standalone. You're not going going yeah, to okay. find yourself entangled in a ten you know well, it'd be in excess of a ten thousand dollar commitment for a you know a whole lunar series. It can mm. be just a one standalone thing, whether it's for yourself or for you know someone that you're fond of and you want to give it as a gift perhaps you yeah. you're not then giving someone the potential burden of an entire <laughs> series when they say this is lovely and you say well wait till next year yeah. uh, it's up to you from here I, I actually think that could be really cool yeah. um we uh oh, you got something there because i think we need to hit the topic of germania there's been a few people asking i know laurie before was asking if there was any update on the germania mint copper bars uh, oh not yeah that I'm more aware of those um a couple of other people asking, and I know something <laughs> that may cause a potential delay on this one. Um, any updates on the auction number one, um, Berlin Bar? <laughs> <laughs> that look, that needs to be the uh, thumbnail. I can't believe thumbnail. you want to be like this, Rubes. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> After the conversation we had beforehand. Yes. Uh, we need to provide some sort of update. I'm just not sure what sort of update that is. I think I think we need to have a conversation with Jumanja first. I will put it that way. <laughs> I, I think that's about all we can say on this one at the moment. Uh, yeah, that kind of... Co- yeah. <laughs> There's so many times where I just want to go blur on camera and say everything, but you can't. Yeah. There's live television for you. Yeah, though. stand by. Ask me... In a two or three weeks' time, when I've actually thought of a suitable response to that question, um, and is there any update on us getting a bullion now um, bar <laughs> through them? Not in the last week. Yeah, okay. I, ju- I haven't had a chance to scratch <laughs> myself in the last. Week. <laughs> yeah. I barely had a chance to shave. I only shaved this morning because <laughs> of live stream. I was looking a bit shaggy prior to that. Um, Silver yeah. Sushi saying, uh, "Yeah, any further thoughts um, on us on us getting them? I sure I'm sure they would last 24 hours. I'm starting to think that's becoming a little bit of a, uh, a yeah. tagline for be in Michael. the 24 hour shop. <laughs> 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 that brings a whole new spin to what I mean by the 24 hour shop. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the other topic I'm going to potentially throw you under the bus for Michael, nice. um, but I'm going to tentatively start with and see if it's something we want to elaborate on." Um, the mainstream media and the news, Michael. Is there anything? Is there any reason why anyone would want to check that out in the next little bit? You can say you, no. You need a photo <laughs> to keep your uh, keep the mice out of the attic. There'll be one in on Saturday in Saturday's age. <laughs> 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 Michael, <laughs> thanks for Look that. Look at that, <laughs> yeah, stunner. We had uh, someone come through from the uh, from the age to photograph Michael this morning. <laughs> um, and to be honest, we're not a hundred percent sure <laughs> what the what article attaching me to. <laughs> but this the works for the age. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you and us will be sitting there to see <laughs> what, what exactly uh, what exactly comes out of that. But yeah, you you might see Michael's smiling face in the uh, the paper or on a uh, on an article tomorrow. We'll, or on we'll a billboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could be interesting. Um, but for someone who gets shoved in front of a camera so often, Michael, I thought you know you'd be uh, you'd be well used to it by now. 
I look at taking a photo <laughs> didn't stress me too much at all. Um, it was. Look, you, you never know. I'm, I'm not having a dig at the age here. Please don't take it that way because I'm absolutely not. I, I haven't seen the, the evidence <laughs> of their work yet. But everyone knows, a lot of people on this channel will know my opinion of uh, what media do to um, sell papers and, you know, get advertising and all that sort of stuff. And they sometimes, you know, sometimes they possibly exaggerate a little bit or take people out of context or, you know, that type of stuff. And Th There's a reason for some hesitancy when you get told that something will be coming <laughs> out and you're yeah. not exactly sure what it is. <laughs> and I vaguely remember the conversation I had with the reporter and I'm fairly sure I didn't say anything too controversial, but we'll see what happens. But either way... Look, okay. YouTube let, let is me absolutely walk, still media. Yeah, <laughs> let me walk this back a little bit. Um, you know, like the fact that the age in, in this example, um, I, I think it's the they represent the age and the Herald Sun, so it could be either side, but they're telling me the age. Um, the fact that the mainstream media there is is coming to bullion dealers and actually saying we would like to do an article on. Um, gold and the popularity of gold and its pricing and all that sort of stuff is brilliant. It means that channels like ours and, and the community like ours are actually starting to make an impact on the wider community. This is fantastic. Mm. And it's one of the reasons why when they said, look, you know, can we swing around and take your photo? I went, well, th this is what we're about. We're trying to get the message out there. Mm. So, you know, full marks to the age. You know, I'm going to buy a copy and it's not just to stick up in the office. It's, um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I'll support the age. Well, they're, um, you know, if they're, they're making these things more accept, acceptable and, and accessible in the market out there for the community so we can get this education out there, absolutely, I think we should support it. Yeah, absolutely. I think we've, we've touched on that each time we've, uh, when we comment on current news cycles and things like that, whenever bullion is you know in the spotlight that it's a positive thing overall and it can expand mm. people's way of thinking and hopefully lead people down the rabbit hole to come and get on board with the live streams and things like that and educate themselves so yeah i think regardless of how the the story is presented i think overall the fact that it raises awareness will hopefully be a good thing yeah but i look forward to seeing it it's exciting times absolutely yeah, yeah. now looking i'm um, it's, I wouldn't say it's like Christmas morning, but I'm looking yeah. forward with anticipation to tomorrow's age. I will. Yeah, that's going to be a bit interested of fun. to see what I said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All Ste right. What's next, Rubes? Stephen suggesting I should add uh, this should last a few days, and this isn't financial <laughs> advice to some uh, to some stickers to sell. <laughs> yeah, I'll be open right. to that. We can add some uh, some uh, sticker variety. That'd be good. Um, well, I was actually going to ask you, Michael, because you were the one that wrote down our list this morning of uh, of things. So um, I wasn't sure if there was anything else, but I also uh, there's heaps of things. <laughs> we yeah, are, have we hit point one yet? <laughs> yeah, that's we right. are starting to run to the uh, t towards the end. So yeah. I don't know if we wanted to uh, cover over all the questions that we may have missed throughout the stream. Try some uh, sixty. 60 questions, questions in, in 7.2 seconds. That's the one. Yep. So if you've got a question that we have haven't answered, that you've asked previously, that you haven't asked yet, or that you might ask into the future, chuck it down and we will see how many we can get through as quickly as possible. All right, Rubes, kick us off. Black Cole says, can you sell uh, Australian, UK, US junk slash constitutional silver coins to BN? Yes. Um, any update on the uh, one ounce gold dragon and koi release? Oh, no. Um, unboxings lined up for next week. We need to. Yes. We need to. We need to do some. <laughs> upcoming. Uh, I can't tell Stay you tuned. how busy I've been this week. <laughs> I have no clue what's happening this afternoon. <laughs> Never mind tomorrow. Stack of spud. When are we going to see Ruben on screen? When I ultimately slip up and uh, do what I did before, but with me in front of the camera. <laughs> uh, any platinum one ounce bars coming soon? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, we've got Kangas in at the moment. Maybe. Um, G uh, Germania Bullion new releases um, well we filmed one today oh don't Ooh. tease them with that um, Modified Stacker a bit of a loaded question there will new Sydney store have an XRF machine we're not working on the assumption there but <laughs> if there is a Sydney store it will have an XRF machine what do we think of the Royal Canadian Mint Lunar Series coins that's I don't know that I've seen them. We looked at them right at the start of the. Of I the probably cycle. loved it. If I'm honest, <laughs> I was going to say it's Canadian mint, but I think no they were more new. Shock if I didn't like yeah. it. <laughs> um, uh, what are our thoughts on the Una and the Lion hundred ounce silver bar that just came out? I like it. Pretty cool. Yeah. Is there plenty of silver one twenty fifth coming? Yes. 
um, a slabbed or graded coin's worth the premium. Depends oh, on the coin. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and the and the slab depends on who's done the grading. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit of that's a can of worms. That yeah. is, as long as we, we could do a whole video on that one. Yeah. in and of itself. Um, auctions. There should be some more coming. Um, Germania runes. Uh, no news on them. What I can't tell you how busy I've been in the last week. <laughs> um, what happened to credit card purchases? Will it return? Uh, so credit card purchases are back in store, and within the next few weeks. And bear in mind, Easter's in the way of that one. Um, it will be available again online. Is Perth doing 125th Sovereign? Surely. Surely. I haven't heard, but... I they definitely will. Yeah, I'd be amazed if they did. Any buyback Lunar Mouse in Gold Vadesi? Maybe. Not that I've seen. No, I don't think so, actually, yeah. Can we hear the F1 cars from the office? The Grand Prix's on, in case. Uh, no. <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Can yeah. VN have a Friday night drink meetup? I think that's a brilliant idea. I could do with one tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Metal Inquisitor wants to know, they asked before, um, if perusing through buybacks is um, for in-store only, and then they're following that up with, can they peruse in-store oh, through the buybacks? That's a loaded question. I'm going to get into trouble with this one. If you come into the store and say, look, you know, what have you got in buybacks? The guys, if they can, and they've got the, the bandwidth to do it, they will actually bring out a box and let you rattle through it. But you've got to bear in mind that the guys can be flat out at times. They've got to queue out the door down the elevator shaft and out on the street. And it can just be chaos. And they may not just have time to do it sometimes. So um, you can have a crack at it. Online, um, look, you know, like we, we can't take photos of each individual coin and do descriptions on it. Otherwise, we've got to put the price up horrendously. So online, we list buyback coins. I think there's some up there at the moment. There was some two ounce as well as one ounce. Um, you know, it's it, it's a lucky dip. 60 questions in 60 <laughs> seconds, Michael. Silver Quick, versus sharp. platinum future potential. This is another one that could go that <laughs> Michael could talk for hours on. So he's on that one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm a bigger fan of platinum than silver. Um, Andrew and Kath want to know if we will be in um, Sydney for the Australian Gold Conference in August. We have to be. I've just committed a large sum of money to being All righty. <laughs> wow, cool. Sounds, sounds good. Um, Greg Clark wants to know if gold will drop below $3,000 Australian again. I'm going to put my neck on the line and say no. Are you okay, Michael? You look a little bit flustered. It's probably from me throwing him <laughs> under the bus a couple of times. Um, I am very flustered, but that's just this week. Don't stress. Okay. <laughs> uh, has Matt seen the 2024 one-ounce super-incused maple with gold gilding? It looks amazing. That sounds Ooh, right up I haven't even alley. seen it and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will gold hit 2500 USD by next month? No. Uh, pay ID? Yes, we do have it. Awesome. Uh, are there any Wonka bars in buyback? Negative. I <laughs> unexpectedly gave my two bars to my nieces. Uh, did we discuss unexpectedly do that? <laughs> did we discuss well, the rise? I wasn't expecting to do it, but they came uh, in, look cute, so we gave them to <laughs> yeah. them. Did we discuss <laughs> the rise in spot? <laughs> Not uh, directly, but there should be a video coming out over the weekend, potentially Monday, depending on when it gets done, um, of discussing exactly that. Uh, Mortified Stacker says uh, you need to give Con and the rest of the back office staff an extra Easter egg for Christmas uh, for putting up with all this. I agree. Um, will we sell airtight capsules? Uh, not in the near future. What are you having for dinner tonight? I have no clue. I'm just trying to make it there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Matt, for looking after me the other day with the delivery of three months storage stock and two mammoth coins. Uh, Michael, how is a Gold Coast store coming along? Wonderfully. Oh, <laughs> we chatted oh, about that as well, that. Tim. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, Michael, if gold is real money, which I agree, why do I pay capital gains tax? Oh, okay. yeah, you're not, gonna, <laughs> you're not trapping me on that one in 7.2 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> Ask me that one when I've got time. Uh, the Commander Silver Series. Lots of people asking about that one. I don't know a lot about this one. I've That's the one that had Napoleon and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kind of kind of cool. It's sort of a different take on a... And a there, there's a lack of a legend sort of thing. It's a pretty bare bones design. I think it's cool. I don't think it's going to be a... I wouldn't get it for investment purposes, this one. No. Uh, but but if you nice. love it... Yeah, aesthetically it's cool. Yeah. Craig, pictures of in-store? Absolutely, we need to do a bit of an update on them. Um we, we, we need to do that. Used to do lives in store. Remember that? Yeah. Sitting on the old armchairs. <laughs> the, the one with the broken wheel. That's that live in lockdown. <laughs> yeah. um, have we ever seen a great white shark in the wild? Yes. Um, used to see a lot of sharks when I used to fly up and down the East Coast. Um, you see them swimming with the, with the surfers. Oh, the really? surfers would have no idea that there's all sorts of sharks swimming around yeah, them. It's because they're very relaxed, cool, calm, collected dudes. Matt, yeah. if you were a tree, what would it be? an acorn tree <laughs> sure 
Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. We're starting to get a little bit off topic with some of those ones there. Um, uh, not a question. Don't forget to tell people about the disclaimer on the Royal Mint products because of their, c- c- I would say, quality or condition. We yeah. have indeed added a disclaimer on some Royal Mint products. If you are purchasing a Royal Mint product uh, from us, please uh, read the... They are. Uh, let, let me summarise. Yeah. As is, well, I can't say where is, but as is, like... We've banged on long enough mm. about the quality issues that the Perth Mint, Perth Mint, Royal, Mint. Royal Mint has got with their one ounce silver coins that don't come in capsules from the Mint. Um, I know there's some other channels that are expressing their disappointment as well. Um, you've got to understand when you get them, they turn up in whatever condition they turn up in and when... No backsies, as my kids would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Facebook comments have been coming through a little weird, but there's one here from uh, Greg that says, if we guess how many one-ounce cast bars are on the desk, can we win one? Uh, <laughs> I think that was from a little bit before, but that made me chuckle. Um, any gold redback spiders coins in one-ounce or five-ounce? No. Nah. Um, has there ever been a coin series done in cross-collaboration between different slash multiple mints? Yeah, we oh, saw yes, the Liberty coin couple. recently. Yeah. Tell us your opinion oh, yeah, of the, uh, some, the latest one. But, some fascinating... <laughs> collaborations are in the works at the moment between the Royal Mint and the US Mint. Yep. They do not tickle my fancy <laughs> in an aesthetic <laughs> sense, but it's lovely to see. That's very diplomatic. All yeah. right, I think we uh, wind it to a close there. Oh, do we oh, have that's to? That's a bit sad. Here's a question. <laughs> you guys Matt, can are you into Coldplay the band? Yes. Oh, don't go on to see them. If, if you get Matt started on music, we will be here. Uh, yeah. Could be here for a while, actually. Nothing wrong with that. One day, one day we're going to do a 24-hour stream. It's going to be nuts. <laughs> if I buy a mammoth tube, how many capsules can I beg for? Well, you don't sell tubes. Oh, I sell them T- by yeah. the tube. <laughs> what are you talking? Yeah, maybe we do need to wrap it up. This has yeah. gone absolutely right. off the rails. Um, yeah, you can beg for as many as you like. I'm not sure how many you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> There's one, one way to find out. Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap it up there, are we? Yeah. Thank you very, 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 very much for tuning in and listening to three guys rabbit on about various topics. We covered it's been quite a pretty a, broad one today. Yeah, yeah, it's been nice. Covered a lot of spectrum. Um, I really do hope you got a lot out of it. Um, please, we're really starting to focus on the education. So please, um, you know, share this with people or share the channel with people just so we can get it out there. Grab an age if you can on the weekend yeah, or we'll, we'll see the, you on the weekend. The um, whatever age like do we, parts do, out to in your local area do we know they, if it's going to be if it's going to make physical print as well as online or as far as i'm aware it makes well that we're in a hurry for the photo to make print for tomorrow so i'm assuming yeah, it's okay. going to make a print so well. if you can grab a copy of it um the age or an affiliate in your state whatever that is um ah good point from mono Tramata. we will not be here next week Oh, in, not as normal. Not We're going to have normal. to do something. We'll do for next something. Week. I just don't know what it'll yeah. be, or we don't know what it'll be at this stage. So yeah, be aware of that. Um, yeah, again, thank you for your time. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff that we never talk about. Yeah, um, we always forget that we uh, we haven't hit a hundred likes in a while. I don't know. Mine's still showing six. I'm yeah, mine has seven updated. before <laughs> eighty three. <laughs> Um, have a really great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Bear in mind, Easter is coming up. And if this is the last chance I get to say this to everyone, please be careful over Easter. It's always a, uh, a, a very yeah. serious time. Like it, not the holiday itself, but uh, there's always accidents around our way. Um, and I just, yeah, just think carefully. Yeah. Alrighty. Wise words. Thanks we for watching, everyone. We'll, we'll, we'll see you, uh, uh, yeah, in the, in the newspaper over the weekend. Hopefully some videos. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah definitely some more videos and things coming next week and something on Friday we will see what form that takes we will see you all then see ya good see ya